and I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. I hope everyone had a happy and safe 4th of July. We had seven drivers seeing action over the weekend, so let's start off with Anthony Alfredo, who was at Road America in his number 38 Speedy Cash Ford Mustang for NASCAR's return to the four mile road course for the first time in 65 years. Anthony qualified 24th, had a decent day going until a brake rotor failure in the final stage sent him into the sand trap, ending his day with a 37th place finish. Let's check in with Anthony for a post-race recap. Well, we blew a left rear rotor out going into turn one, which is the fastest, heaviest braking zone on the track. So thankfully I didn't crash into anything or, or end up worse than it was. It just went off track and I was able to spin it out and allow the gravel trap to stop me. But unfortunate end to our day in our speedycash.com Ford Mustang. The car was solid. Everyone at Front Row Motorsports are doing a great job to keep us in contention. I hate our day ended early like that, but something, some days you'll have stuff like that. So I hope everyone continues to have a great 4th of July weekend. Stay safe and have a good time. Up next for Anthony, Atlanta Motor Speedway on July the 11th. Jesse Love was at Irwindale Speedway for round three of the Arkham Menard Series West 150 lap main event. Jesse qualified seventh in his number 16 Napa Auto Parts Toyota ran in the top five for most of the race and took advantage of a late race restart with five to go and passed Dean Thompson for the win. Check out this last few laps in this video. Right. Love again, working hard to the bottom side. He's going to clear Dean Thompson off a of turn two. Love is your leader into three. Here comes Dean Thompson to the bottom side of the racetrack. Thompson trying to pull the crossover, can't make it stick. Love leads him across the stripe with two to go. Joey East now to the inside of Dean Thompson down the back stretch. Love driving off, coming to the white flag. One to go here in Irwindale. Here comes Dean Thompson now with some momentum. White flag up here at Irwindale, one to go. What's going to happen down the back stretch off into turns three and four? Three car lengths up at the front of the field for Jesse Love. Here comes Thompson to the bottom side of the racetrack. Not going to make it stick. Jesse Love picking up the checkered flag here at Irwindale. Great job, young man. Jesse then made the trip to Slinger Speedway for the Slinger Nationals on Tuesday, where he qualified ninth, started fourth with the invert, then brought home a third place finish in his number 21 Mobile One Toyota. I have never been to Slinger, but it's now on my bucket list. What a fast track that saw consistent laps under 12 seconds for the entire race. Up next for Jesse, Arca Menard Series at Elko Speedway on July 10th. Joey East was also at Irwindale Speedway in his number 54 Nate Clower Motorsports prepared my job depends on Ag Ford. Joey qualified second, ran in the top five for the complete race, and brought home an impressive third place finish. Up next for Joey, Arkham Menard Series at Iowa Speedway on July 24th. Make sure to check out Joey's fan club member packages on joeyeastracing.com where you can become a member and even be featured on Joey's car for an upcoming race. Connor Mozak was at Road America for the Trans Am Series TA2 race that had seven NASCAR Xfinity or NASCAR Cup drivers competing on Saturday. Connor started P5 and quickly moved up to second and ran there most of the race, but got off course with only three laps remaining, ending his day. Up next for Connor, Trans Am Series, Brainerd International Raceway, July 17th and 18th. Caden Honeycutt was at South Boston Speedway for round one of the Virginia Triple Crown. The first of three races started with the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson 200, where Caden qualified fourth. Caden ran in the top two or three for most of the race, but got shuffled back on a restart on lap 180, was running in fifth before a late race caution with three to go. He got stuck behind another car resulting in an eighth place finish. 
Up next for Caden, back to the dirt at Boyd Raceway on Friday night and then to Abilene Speedway on Saturday, all part of the Sooner Late Model Series. Bryce Bizanson was at South Sound Speedway for the West Road Super Late Model 126. Bryce qualified his Jefferson Racing number seven Friends of Jacqueline Foundation Ford in second and started fifth after the invert. Bryce ran second for most of the race and eventually brought home a podium finish in third. Up next for Bryce, Northwest Super Late Models at Magic Valley Speedway on July 10th. Jake Bowman made his Super Late Model debut at South Sound Speedway where he qualified fourth out of a very strong 17 car field for the West Roads 126. Jay had a solid top 10 going before getting turned and then hit by another competitor ending his race. Up next for Jake, SRL Pro Late Models at Irwindale Speedway on July 17th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Sheldon Creed who will be at Knoxville, Iowa as the Camping World Truck Series makes its debut on the famed Dirt Half Mile on July 9th. Brody Moore will be back in his super late model at Colorado National Speedway on July 10th. Carter Whalen returns to Metro Atlanta QMA on July 10th. And Landon Cox will also be at Metro Atlanta QMA on July 10th. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching. Thank you.